in March 2020, the demand for most consumer goods has increased almost overnight. Toilet paper flew off the shelves. There were shortages of rice and pasta. Masks and hand sanitizers sold for hundreds of dollars online. At the same time, affected industries with low or almost no demand, like travel, dropped their prices hoping to reach at least a fraction of their projected revenue for the year. Yes, changes in consumer demand and behavior are rarely so big, long-lasting, and hard to predict. The supply chain of any business is a complex mechanism, and it thrives on stability, on knowing exactly how much product is demanded in the exact place by the exact time. How do companies do that? Demand forecasting, how companies prepare for the future. Interestingly enough, in China, manufacturers quickly adapted to the new reality even before the virus hit Europe and the US. Master Kong, a leading instant noodle producer, reworked its whole supply chain and had already recovered by more than 50% in January. It was also able to supply 60% of the reopened stores with its produce, three times more than competitors. But how? Well, first of all, they were reviewing the consumption dynamics daily and changing their priorities regularly. When and where is hoarding expected? How soon will they run out of stock in different locations? Next, they kept monitoring the reopening plans of all their offline distributors to be ready to supply them as soon as possible, all while sustaining production with only a fifth of their workforce and minus 10 production lines. And finally, they quickly shifted their focus to online retail, expecting a surge of e-commerce traffic like there was in 2002 and 2003 during the previous SARS crisis. Past and future are interconnected, and not only philosophically, but in a very practical way too. We can predict changes in our lives, businesses, and the world because history has been proven to repeat itself, and historical data allows us to be confident that it will. But there are many ways of using this data to get the best forecast specifically for your business or product. The most popular one being Traditional Statistical Methods Traditional Statistical Methods In forecasting, statistics have been used for decades to predict how much pasta, toilet paper, and sanitizers will be consumed in a period of time. Same with service providers like hotels, airlines, and entertainment companies who look at trend projections to control their supply chains. Here's how it works. Companies usually use what's called time series data, data recorded at equally spaced intervals, like the number of orders or new and leaving customers. Time series allows them to see the trend and seasonality. Are sales going up or down, and when does it happen? If there's a specific pattern, you can expect it to continue in the same manner. For example, this time series analysis shows the growing cyclical interest in plant-based milk that usually spikes in January. This is most likely due to Veganuary, a yearly challenge that inspires hundreds of thousands of people to try plant-based milk for one month instead of regular cow's milk. You can also see the growing trend as more and more people go vegan every year. If you're a soy milk manufacturer and you know that January will bring much more demand, you can stock up and adapt your storage and supply situation to always keep shelves full. You can also launch an advertising campaign just as potential customers start researching cow's milk alternatives. Tracking and analyzing this data is easy. You can build trend graphs in Excel and find this functionality in any enterprise planning software. But it's not always that simple in real life. Traditional statistics aren't particularly useful when you're launching a new product. They're useful only for products that have been enjoying a stable demand for years. Besides, you can't do short-term planning as data won't be accurate. Yes, in many situations and with many products, historical data is enough, but not all. When the lockdown started, people were stockpiling on toilet paper, leading to an unprecedented 112% increase in sales. In April, 73% of U.S. stores were out of toilet paper. As the pandemic showed, the demand changes may be illogical and unpredictable. And here, historical data alone won't help. So what would? How to make advanced demand predictions. Data-driven coffee chain. Sounds like the most millennial thing to say. Yes, it's exactly how Starbucks operates. They collect tons of data points about shops, customers, suppliers, and the outside world. 
that can signal change in customer behavior and demand, and then can be used in analytics to support the reliable supply chain. This is possible due to a combination of statistics and machine learning techniques called predictive analytics. Here's how it works. Predictive analytics and demand forecasting. First, data of different types and sources is aggregated into one pile of data. It can grow endlessly and store all types of useful information from the number of vanilla syrup bottles at each location to the type of comments under the latest Instagram post. Then, this data is carefully cleansed and categorized by data scientists to make it actually usable by a machine. After that, specialists decide what forecasting algorithm works for your product. Here, you can use the same time series we already discussed, but now with more than one variable. Not just sales volume, but also data from different regions, the number of competitors in those regions, and economic indicators for starters. Then, several predictive models are built and run to discover any interdependencies. Unlike traditional statistics, predictive analytics is way better at short-term planning and designed specifically for products with short life cycles and volatile demand. In changing market conditions like recession, such complex analytics can give speedy feedback and help you adapt faster than competitors. But what if you want to plan not weeks, but days or even hours ahead? You will need demand sensing for it. What is demand sensing? Demand sensing is a technique for adjusting already made predictions daily, based on the data coming at this exact moment. It reduces forecast error by up to 40%, giving you an immediate advantage in answering customers' most recent needs. It should be used carefully, though, and never be a sole source of your business decisions. The opinion of the human expert is still preferred. It's worth saying that traditional methods are not only popular, but extremely useful in certain situations. More advanced methods don't have to replace the old ones. They should simply expand our tool set. When to use predictive analytics for demand forecasting. Well, firstly, in situations with no sales history, like when launching a new product, you can't simply use a competitor's data and you will rarely have enough of it to make any predictions. But clustering data of multiple competitors, taking into account market research and third-party analytics, you can create a model that will give an accurate result and help you adequately prepare for entering the market. Then, some product life cycles are so short, their demand is exceedingly hard to predict. Take fast fashion brands. They update inventory every two weeks and each item of clothes follows different demand patterns. Machine learning allows the automatic tracking of sales data for every item category and style, along with current fashion trends and season, to make an accurate prediction for the future collections. If your product demand fluctuates due to weather, predictive analytics will help you prepare better. Same with natural disasters and the pandemic. If you know your product may be needed for specific situations, you can prepare models that will spot them and help you stock up. You can also predict the effectiveness of marketing campaigns and plan them with more information at hand. This eliminates guesswork and saves thousands of dollars spent on fruitless promotions. Finally, predictive analytics are beneficial when there are simply too many variables for a human to compile and analyze. When the risk of supply and demand mismatch is too big, when customer tastes are frequently changing, when anything can shake your stock up, that's when machine learning becomes critical and saves businesses and lives. How to implement predictive analytics practices. This is, of course, possible if you have enough data to feed your prediction model. Every organization generates data, but it's barely usable and can't be automatically sent to production. By this point, you probably understand how difficult of a task that is. A lot of high quality data, tons of processing power, no, this time Excel won't do. And a few people who actually know what they're doing is a combination that seems like a minimal starter kit. Starbucks, Target, Nestle, Netflix, Heinz, SAS, and many other corporations have almost unlimited resources to make data work for them. But what about the rest of us? The potential of machine learning is opening for many smaller businesses and with a lower threshold. Google, Amazon, and Microsoft are the biggest contributors to the popularization of ML solutions, 
also called machine learning as a service. They have already to use tools to load your data and process it on their platform, often with some adjusting on your part. This makes tasks like demand forecasting more approachable to almost anyone. And today is a good time to enter the market. Sophisticated analytics are particularly important during and after a crisis when customers are changing priorities. New distribution channels are gaining traction and prices are all over the place. Demand keeps evolving every day and the supply chain should follow it.